Hey, Steve Mignani here at Burniston Auto Wrecking in Burniston, Massachusetts, doing the junkyard crawl. And I'm standing between two giants, kind of. This is a 1987 Dodge D350 chassis cab, the biggest, meanest Dodge medium duty truck you could get in 1987. On the other end of the coin, in 1987, this is a Dodge D50 Sport. Never heard of one? Well, this is actually a Mitsubishi. Now, here's the thing in 1979, Dodge actually began to badge engineer and import their Mitsubishi pickup trucks and called them the Ram Sport, the D50. And here's the thing, this was a response to the rapid growth of Datsun and Toyota import mini trucks in the 1970s, which were becoming a huge thing. And even Chevrolet had the Love, which was an imported Isuzu. Ford had the Ranger, which was an imported Mazda. And for 79 through 1994, Dodge imported the Mitsubishi pickup truck right here and sold them as the Ram 50, which is one seventh the size of a 350, kind of, sort of. But these things actually had a 1,400 pound payload and it was an optional one ton model, 2,000 pound capacity. So these were not lightweight trucks by any stretch, but they were small. Now under the hood of these things, you won't find any V8s, uh, not even a six cylinder in 1987 and before. This is the uh, tried and true 2.6 liter Mitsubishi silent shaft in line four kind of a Hemi. A similar engine was also used in the Dodge Colt going all the way back to the early 1970s. And again, no V8s, but these will take a V8 with no problem. Plenty of room in the engine bay for width and length. But again, these are purely economical vehicles. And again, here's the Mitsubishi. They're not fooling anybody with the Dodge and the Ram nomenclature. But again, Dodge wasn't the only one doing this. Of course, Chevy started it with the Love. And of course, Ford had the, uh, the wonderful Courier, which again were Isuzu and Mazda vehicles. Uh, in turn. But a plastic grill, classic 1980s stuff. 1987 right here was the first year for a facelift, a redesign. And if we see this from the side, we'll see sort of more angular forms rather than the rounded forms of, uh, of 1986. This squared off stuff here was kind of meant to emulate the look of the Nissan or slash Datsun hard body pickup truck. So it was a game of, you know, cat and mouse catch up in, uh, not Detroit, but in the uh, light pickup truck market. But again, we can see the iconic Graphy here, the 50 Sport with the Ram right there, the whole Dodge logo. And if we come over to the big 350 series, we'll see the very same fonts, the same branding, the same marketing here, but 350, not 50. So this is seven times bigger. Well, maybe, but not really. But something about these Isuzu pickups, although they are small, they're heavy duty. I mean, look at the wheels, six lug wheels, one, two, three, four, five, six, front and rear, heavy steel rims. And this one was a looker when it was new. This was basically a black pickup with gold graphics. And if you think this looks similar to the Pontiac Trans Am Special Edition of 1976, 78, 79, that's very much on purpose. You know, in fact, all of Detroit discovered the allure of gold and black special packages, including the little Ram Sport 50. Inside, these were loaded with options, uh, a tilt column, believe it or not, an adjustable column. And uh, these had factory tachometers. We can see this one here goes to uh, uh, just about 6,000 RPM, that little inline four is a revving little critter. Speedometer on this thing goes to 115. Now you might say to yourself, well, hold on. Starting in 1977, I believe it was, 85 mile an hour speedometers became the rule, right? Well, here's the thing. It was a mandate, but in 1982, the law was actually rescinded. You didn't have to, as a car maker, have an 85 mile an hour speedometer, but most car makers continued with it, but not a Suzu, 115. Uh, most other vehicles had 85 mile an hour speedometers until about 1989, when it was finally realized it was an absurd idea to tell people 85, they'll go whatever they want. But again, this is 115 mile an hour speedometer. Now this is a short bed, kind of an unusual little critter with a six foot bed. There's also an optional seven and a half foot bed. And they usually say that, you know, short bed, half ton, two wheel drive, anything is the one you want. I dare say that's the case here. But again, these chrome wheels are factory applied stuff. That is not an aftermarket goodie. So this was a looker when it was new. The base price on this was 5,788 bucks back in 1987. And that was a $1,500 uh, sum less than a Dodge D100 pickup truck. So a lot of value in one of these things. Uh, we come around to the back here, we can see Dodge on the back, but let's take a closer look. It says imported for Dodge. So that imported part, well, let's get to that. Inside, this is the 1981 Dodge Imports catalog. And yeah, that's a Dodge Challenger. Most people don't remember. Oh yeah, they made Challengers. Yeah, that's a Mitsubishi right there. I think it's the Galant, I think, I think. 
But again, uh, this is a whole uh, catalog right here acknowledging and devoted to the idea that Dodge was absolutely importing foreign cars, including that goofy little Colt. They made these things as the RS. I think there was even a turbo version of this little critter. And here's the stripper Colt. I remember these things when I was a kid, the Champ, the Colt, the Plymouth Champ. And believe it or not, Plymouth also had a version of this, this pickup truck called the Plymouth Arrow, 1979 through 82. But getting back to uh, this, uh, here's the Challenger. Look at that. Most people think the Challenger was either 1970 through 74 or modern. Nope, this thing was in the middle. Japanese rear wheel drive, 2.6 liter four banger, whatever. But again, getting into the Ram 50 series, there it is right there. First generation body here, rounded forms. Again, this 87 has the uh, the second gen hard body Nissan influenced square body, but the basic same stuff right here, two wheel drive or four wheel drive. Uh, Ram 50 born to perform, built to last in Japan. Nothing wrong with that, but there it is, the stripper right there. And again, these had a 1,400 pound capacity. Uh, you could also get, a, again, a, a, two, a one ton or 2,000 pound. And again, uh, the NAPS, this is the uh, the compound valve Hemi, little engine right there, three valves, a little stratified charge deal right there. And again, the uh, the 2.6 was a pretty decent little engine. And again, it was little, but these trucks sold pretty well. And again, all the way up till uh, the 1990s, from 79 through 1994, uh, these were being imported. Let's open up this door right here and I'll take a peek inside here and find some goodies. Kind of cool to see this right here, the original owner's manual right there, 1987 Dodge Ram 50. And inside we see just basically the off to, it's off to a good start. There you go. That's, that's how you always want to be, I think. But just all the data on this thing and in the back, uh, just, you know, maintenance stuff, whatever. And this is 1989 Dodge trucks. And this is interesting. Now, you've got to remember, this is a couple years later than this 1987. 87 was the first year for the Dodge Dakota, which was the American-built mid-size Dodge truck. Now, the mid-size Dakota was sold alongside the D50 Ram. And here we have here, the Dakota was the big deal in 1989, but again, arrived in 87 as the right-sized Dodge truck between the little Ram 50 and the full-size trucks. But these are the bigger trucks. And we see the pickups and the vans, et cetera. But here's the funny thing. On the last page, very last page, here's the talk about these imports right here. Just a little tiny blurb in the back. But that thing right there, the Ram 50 two-wheeler, the Ram 50 four-wheeler right there. And of course, the Raider, which was also a Mitsubishi creature. So again, the imported Dodges were part of the picture, but only given a back page on the overall catalog. And something else I see in here, yeah, look at this. If you want to wet your whistle. A little uh, Canadian Club Limited whiskey right there. It's not even been opened. Now I'm clean and sober, so I can't use that. But that's okay. It's right here, uh, here at Burns Auto Wrecking. And again, this is a pretty good example of the breed. Something kind of cool, by the way, is the aluminum cab on the back. And these things right here could be clear windows if you paid a little extra or these aluminum block offs kind of a cool thing. And caps were a huge thing in the 1970s and the 80s. People would put a cap on the back of their truck and then have the uh, benefits of the security. Nobody could steal your junk and keep it dry and clean with the cap. That was a big deal. A period correct cap on the back of this 1987 Dodge Mitsubishi Ram 50 Sport. And uh, again, very original little truck right here. And uh, the Mitsubishi uh, pickup trucks, I believe, were also sold as the Mighty Might by Mitsubishi dealers. So it's interesting that Dodd actually allowed Mitsubishi to sell these trucks as competition for the Ram versions, which were basically badge engineered. So here we have it, the baby Ram in 1987, the full-sized 350, also from 1987. You name it, the Dodge line could supply a truck to fill your needs. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steam Mag's YouTube channel. I'll hit the like button, Ring the bell so that you're aware of the next video, which comes out tomorrow.